Hello, I'm Dr. Hassan Tohid, and I am here with another sensational topic, Scoping Reviews. Scoping Review or Scoping Reviews. What is Scoping Review? What are Scoping Reviews? Scoping Reviews are review articles. And as we already know, review articles are the review of articles, as the name suggests. That means that it's it's a study of studies that we do not do a study of patients here, but we do study of studies. We will combine all the previously published papers on a certain topic and we write a paper out of it. And that is a review article. And review articles are of different types. Literature review, we call it as traditional review. Scoping review, systematic review, meta-analysis, and mapping review. So there are these kinds of reviews. Now here we are talking about scoping review. So what is a scoping review? Scoping review is, as the name suggests, a scoping search. You are trying to see how much data is available, what has been done, how many kinds of studies are available, how many kinds of study designs are available on this particular topic, particular subject. That's it. So we actually are not answering a question here. So the main difference between a systematic review and scoping review is in the, that in the systematic review, you are answering a question. Even in a traditional review, you, can, you may answer a question. But here, your question is very broad. It's a broader question. You're not actually answering a question. You're actually looking at what is already done, what has been already done how many studies are available, what kind of studies are available. Because the scoping review can be a precursor to a systematic review. It will help you decide, should you go with a systematic review in the future, or you should not go with a systematic review. So this is how the scoping review helps. And by the way, scoping review is a new study design. Uh, before 2015, people did not hear about the word scoping review but now it is used too often in the scientific community in the scientific world. So that's why I'm making this video so that you can write a scoping review. If you have been giving, given a task, if you have been given a task by your teachers, by your mentor, or by your supervisor to write a scoping review, now this is the video for you to help you with the step-by-step -step guide on how to write a scoping review. So let's begin. So what is the first thing first? The first thing first is the topic, right? You decide a topic. The first step is you decide a topic. Then the second step is you decide your research question. Yes, there will be a research question, but it will be broader. And for research question, we have this PCC, PCC framework that has been given by JBI in 2015. And according to that PCC framework, P actually is, as the name suggests, we, we know for the PICO, for the systematic reviews, PICO question, it's, it's quite similar. So PCC. P is like population, C would be your concept, and the next C would be the context. So you can divide your research question into these three things, and it will help you in your data search as well. You can divide each of these into the concepts, and you can do your data search. You can refer to my search strategy, mass search strategy video, and you will understand how usually this is done. Now. The next thing is, once you have decided your research question, the next thing is your inclusion exclusion criteria. This is your step three, the inclusion exclusion criteria. You decide your inclusion exclusion criteria, and it will be a little broader, remember. It will be a little broader than a systematic review because here you need to see what has already been done, how many studies are available, what kind of studies are available, what kind of study designs are available. So it will be a little broader. Once you're done with your inclusion exclusion criteria, the next step is, the next step is the data search. By the way, your protocol is being done now. This method section, this method is your protocol. So you're working on your protocol and you may you may actually also submit it to websites such as Prospero. And uh, you, you need to know about this, that this is optional, you can do that as well. Now the next thing is number four, the data search. Your search begins and how do you search it? You will do the database search just like you do in systematic reviews or traditional reviews. You will go to electronic databases and uh, you will find published papers. And at the same time, you will also look for unpublished papers. Yes, just like in systematic reviews here, you will look for published papers and unpublished papers. 
published papers and unpublished papers. You will have both. So you decide your databases, you do the search strategy. Once your search is done, you now remove the duplicates. Once you remove the duplicates, now the next step, the step number five would be your, the step number five would be your screening. Now you do the screening, screening is in two steps. The, the first step of screening is to screen with titles and abstract. You just remove those articles that are straight away a no-no. You cannot keep them. The next step would be the next step would be the um, the full text search. The full text search. Now you will search the full text. So once you search the full text, now whatever papers are available. Usually in systematic reviews, we search the uh, we we check the quality. We do the critical appraisal, quality assessment. But here it's optional. We don't need to do it. Why is it optional? It is optional because you want to keep it broad. You don't want to exclude certain studies because in systematic reviews, you are looking at the best evidence. Here, you are not looking at the best evidence. You're looking at the overall evidence. How much is it available? How much evidence is available? And then the next step is that you do the data extraction by charting the data. Once you do the data extraction, then you can write it as the next step. So these are the steps of the scoping review. Now, I'll repeat again. How many steps are there? Just for your understanding, I'll repeat again. So let's begin. The first step was that we decided our topic. The second step was research question. Once we understand your, our research question with the PCC format, um, the framework, then the next thing was our inclusion exclusion criteria. Once we do our inclusion exclusion criteria, we apply that. We now begin our data search. Once we begin our data search, the next thing is the duplicates removal. We remove the duplicates. The next thing would be, of course, the screening. We do the screening and screening of uh, titles and abstracts. Once that is done, then the screening of full text articles. Then no quality appraisal here. Remember, no quality appraisal here. It's optional. You can do it. Sometimes you may do it, but it's optional. It's not a mandatory requirement. And the next thing after that is done is the data extraction and then the writing. So these are the total 10 steps. You can divide this into these 10 steps to write a scoping review. Now, let's watch this video again, rewind it, take notes, listen to it properly, and ask me any question if you have comment below and I'll get back to you and start working on your scoping review. One last thing you, you need to make sure is that while doing this process, you should have Prisma, checklist for scoping reviews open in front of you. This checklist will guide you and help you till the end. Without this checklist, you may compromise the quality of your scoping review. So just begin now, start working on it. Best of luck, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.